Good evening, folks. Welcome to the Hour of Charm. <laughs> now, I'm going to be here for a full hour, and I sincerely hope you'll return the courtesy. For nearly 50 years, Jimmy Durante was one of America's most popular entertainers. There's a word that is so overused, it, it's almost lost its meaning, but Jimmy Durante was unique. He was a rousing success in vaudeville, nightclubs, on the radio, in the movies, as a recording artist, and most especially, on television. Jimmy Durante, in person. From TV's golden age, here are Jimmy Durante's finest moments. La 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 Say magnifique <laughs> When every night Your true love holds you tight Ooh, la 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 <laughs> Say magnifique And when One day I'll <laughs> no black magic. Sing the song, man. Sing the song, man. No black magic. Ooh la 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 la. Say magnifique. Join away, girls. Too much of this could be fatal. <laughs> Durante was the ultimate everyman because he had none of the qualities that you normally would associate with stardom. He wasn't handsome. Now I know I never got my name in Who's Who, but I did get my picture once in What's This? <laughs> he didn't have a beautiful voice. Say it with drink, but always be careful not to say it with ink. A -dink -a -dink. <laughs> he seemed like somebody who just stumbled into what he did and had such an infectious and irresistible personality that everything he did had charm, everything he did had humor. You know, folks, now that I'm back in Hollywood, them NBC bosses said I gotta be glamorous. So I went to a plastic surgeon. I had it enlarged. <laughs> Why, you can start off the cake with a star. You can start off the cake with a star. Say now even when things go wrong. Why, you be better. You even look better. Ah, uh, folks. I'm very happy to be on Sunday nights for Colgate. For all over the country, romantic young couples are sitting in their love seats, holding hands, watching television, with all the lights out except the lights in their television sets. I got an idea. I got an idea. Turn all them cameras off. That's it. That's it. Now turn them on again. I hope you kids took advantage of the blackout. <laughs> I've got a million of them, a million of them. Now the way that you take my hand, why would tell me how I stand? You know, with me it's too late, but why should my picture suffer? <laughs> Folks, you ought to keep your television screens cleaner. Why do you better? You even look better. I'm here to 
tell you that kill me, you don't tell us what I'm going to do. 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 Tell us
I just came to see if it's true. Yours is bigger. <laughs> I'd like to get your fingerprint. Okay. All right, now just press your finger on this ink pad. And on the card. You know, that's the best identification you can have. That's the best identification I can have? Huh? Traveling together, and I don't want my nose stopped at the border. <laughs> hey. Hey. Girls, wait a minute. This isn't my birthday. It is. No, but it's the birthday of someone near and dear to me. It's my nose's birthday, not mine. And I'm proud to say the stars are doing fine. My nose was born upon this day in 1893. Exactly two weeks later, the stock delivered me. It was the first time in history that a nose outweighed the child. <laughs> you know, when I was born, my dad took one look at my snars and said to the stock, I give up. Just because our country's emblem is an eagle, that don't mean we have to race for it. <laughs> but in spite of my dad, the snars and I are closer than Damon and Petelius. Not even a mustache has ever come between us. I tried to raise a mustache once and what happened? Nothing. It wouldn't grow in a shade. <laughs> I'm as happy as I can be. Cause it's my nose's golden anniversary. You know, folks, looking back over the years, the schnauz and I weathered many a storm. I'll never forget when I was a kid at school. I was in the lunchroom having lunch with a bunch of the kids. When one of the kids turned to me and said, is that your nose or are you eating a banana? <laughs> a tear started to roll down my nose. Yes, and it's a brave tear that will start out on a trip like that. <laughs> but you know, I felt sorry for the schnoz, but I'm proud of him. I'll never forget the day the schnoz saved my life. I'm taking my daily dip in the ocean, when suddenly I came face to face with a vicious swordfish. He was about to attack but after taking a second look at my snarls, the swordfish said, I give up. You're equipped with a superior weapon. <laughs> but I am as happy as I can be. Cause it's my nose's golden anniversary. It's my nose's golden anniversary. Thank you, folks. I noticed nothing about Durante except Durante. That was his magic, was that once you saw him, you took the whole package. That was him. And uh, at least speaking for myself, I never thought about his nose. I never thought about his thinning, almost non-existent hair. That was just the way he looked. That was him. That is not much there, but every strand has a muscle. <laughs> Why, only the other day, Rita Hayward offered me a thousand dollars for a lock of my hair. Betty Grable offered me 3000 for a lock of my hair. Reed Gosselin offered me 5000 for a lock of my hair. What a dilemma. Just when I can make a fortune, I run out of merchandise. He wore his hat all the time. He wore that the black felt hat. I'll go out with me to Haywood. I'll ride in midget cars up they say. But in Hollywood, I've run it understood. I refuse to wear a phone ray. I'll have lunch with Daryl Savage. Why, if man a turn to watch the tip be okay. I'll give her just one tip, but I insist on this. I refuse to wear a phone ray. What's wrong with this hat? the way she wants me to wear it. <laughs> and folks, here's the hat that President Truman wears when he sits on the 50-yard line at the Army and Navy game. <laughs> <laughs> and after the game, back to the yacht. And well, a pearly toupee. They might make me leave town, but I'll put the foot down. I refuse to wear a toupee. Why, 
when you wear a beret of red body fox Frenchly, they think you're French. Oh, mon petit, you two are fish and monsters for Jimmy the beret magnifique. Oh, well, in God, with the love, mon chéri. Come here, I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> how about going out with me today? Yes. And how about going over to your house, sitting in the parlor with the lights down low? Oui. And how about a little hugging and a kissing? Ooh, we. Oui. If I can only find out what that word means, I'm in business. Oh, I'll be sure to assist your mother's watch. Wait a minute. What is she saying? Jimmy, she's only trying to tell you that you look cute in a beret. But I don't want a beret. Oh, you mean? Why, when you have a beret, you've got to buy a million things to match. A beret is connected with dark glasses. Connected with a smoking jacket. Jacket is connected with a cigarette holder. So take away the beret. A holder is connected with a white scarf. Scarf is connected with croquet. Croquet is connected with a beret. So take away the beret. There's part, there's big, there's small parades. There's winter, there's spring, there's fall parades. But I'm down on all parades. So take away the beret. Hallelujah! Hooray, hooray! Take him away! Hooray, hooray! Take him away! Wait a minute, I'm exhausted, I'm ex... <laughs> I am out. I'm exhausted. Don't stop taking me! Hey, I'm not... Let me get the line out. I don't... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I don't mind. Let me... <laughs> You're getting me tired here. I don't mind sitting on the sidelines when I got a... When I... When I... <laughs> I don't mind sitting on the sidelines when I got a bench like this. Now I refuse to wear I will come from my hair. I refuse to wear a parade. Folks, don't go away. I'll be back in a jiffy. I turn on that light. I'll slip out. I'll just slip out of my pajamas. <laughs> That weightlifting sure pays off. Oh, I forgot to do my deep breathing exercises. <laughs> I better not expand it anymore. I'd have knocked down the screen. <laughs> Somehow I just don't look the same in clothes. <laughs> but when you think about Durante, what do you think about? Women! Women! I don't ever remember him being, thinking of him as a ladies' man. No, but the ladies liked him. <laughs> we love you, Jimmy. We think you're a doll. Well, in that case, I'll have to take you under my wings and straighten you up. I know that you'll go very far Why you could really be a star If you just put yourself in my hand Now just smile with personality There's a change immediately You've got to put yourself in my hand Now show me how you walk Show me how you stand It's no use, I've got to take things in hand You've got to practice till you ache Let me see you do a break That's grand Soon you'll have your own show. Now wait and see. You'll hang around with Milton Boyle and snub your nose at me. I want no gratitude. And here's my attitude. You'll be a star before long. You just can't go wrong if you just put yourself in my hand. Television is what really cemented his stardom. So he was at the top of the heap at that moment. And you can see his performing is with complete confidence. You're gonna be a star before long. I think what made him communicate so well with audiences, his sincerity and his apparent spontaneity, even if a lot of the material was scripted, 
is what made him so effective as a singer because people believed his interpretations of the songs. They believed that he felt the emotions he was expressing in the lyrics. So while it, on the surface, would seem incongruous for him to be singing September song or some sentimental ballad, it worked beautifully. When I was a young man caught in the curve, I played me a waiting game. If a maid refused me with toss and curls, I let the old earth take a couple of words while I plied her with tears and lure of pearls. And as time came around, she came my way. And as time came around, she came. Oh, it's a long, long while From May to December But the days grow short When you reach September When the autumn weather Turns the leaves to flame one hasn't got time for the week game. All the days dwindle down to a precious few. September, November. And these few precious days I'll spend with you These precious days I'll spend with you Folks, this is an evening with Jimmy Durante. And those of you who just tuned in have missed a glorious half hour. You know, if I hurt you, it's the same as hurting me. And if you hurt me, it's the same as hurting you. I see the doctor whenever he's ill. And when he has a headache, I take a pill. When he takes a cab, I pay for the ride. And when I spend an evening with my girl, mm -hmm. he waits outside. Oh, what an association. He treats me like a brother. We share together. What a pair together. We appreciate each other. When you hear dancing with a definite beat. And my boy. Sing that song, Jimmy. You must admit he's very light on his feet. When you hear his fingers tinkle, 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 it's the real McCoy. And when his toes go twinkle, 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 I'm proud of that boy. Yes, sir. Oh, what a style. There's not a trick in the books. He doesn't employ. It won't be long before the world's at your feet. He taught me everything I know. Now, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Yes, we'll have everybody jumping for joy. Yes, that's that's my boy. When you hear dancing with a definite beat, swing it. Ah, that's my boy. Donald, come on. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
everybody jump with joy. Yes, that's my boy. Oh, Donald, what? You, you play the piano, let the master take over. You mean? There we go. Do that trick. Right, do that trick. Oh, I can't do it. Come on, you can do it. Do it once more. Can't, can't do it. Confidence, confidence. Do it. I got it. I got it. The old Jimmy. Let's go home. Yeah. Let's go home. Remember, scene one, you're at camera one and two. And scene two, you're at camera four and one. And scene three, you're back at camera three and two. And scene five over here, as you come down stage center, you walk over to stage left, you pick up the chair, you walk over to stage right, and then you exit out and X left. <laughs> oh, the opinions expressed by those two boys ain't necessarily what I'm going to do. <laughs> Jimmy Durante always seemed to be doing something spontaneous. Nothing he did seemed prepared or scripted. I can I Now I'll give you just five seconds to tell these people that Mo Rolla gives you a brighter, greater... Picture. What, am I a pinwheel here? Automatically. <laughs> <laughs> Get me the script right away. <laughs> Forgetting lines was part of his shtick, if you will. Uh, I'm amazed that he remembered as much as he did. In some places it was an act, and some places it wasn't. Oh, hi, Jimmy. Everybody recognizes me. My long in, my long in, my long in lobes get me away. Everyone loves a genuine ad lib because it makes you feel like you're you're in on something. The champagne is flat. Either the sound man was later, he saved the best bottle for himself. And before I'm finished. I'll have all the rest of your secret documents. Remember, I have Leonard Turner standing by. <laughs> Ethel, take them off my hands of turning paper. Now, wait a minute. I remember all these lines, and I want to say something. <laughs> Ethel Barrymore gets off an ad lib. I mean, that's, that's an incredible moment. And Duretti had a way, I think, of putting everybody at ease. He, he wanted the guest star to look good. And that was essential. Th those people wouldn't have gone on his show if they felt that he would allow them to look bad. Ah, oh, Beth, it's so nice to come home to you, my loving wife. She don't love me. She only married me for my nose. <laughs> oh, James, you're so dashing. You're the handsomest man in the whole world. What else can I say? It's his show. <laughs> wonder what I'm doing here. Why is Durante so anxious to see me? I bet he wants me to be on his television show. Why did Gary Cooper have to be out of town? <laughs> <laughs> to have John Wayne on a TV show in 1953 was a big deal. I mean, a really big deal. I'd like to use it in the picture, but I don't see how we can. You don't see how you can, huh? No. Who's got the next line? You or me? Take two. Take two. We gotta work together. I'm just putting you to the test. John Wayne was at the top of his form and at the peak of his popularity when he made that appearance. Have faith in me, kids. I win one later. And it's so much fun to watch him because he's obviously embarrassed to a degree to be trying to do, you know, song numbers and skits, but he's a professional, and he's going to do it the best he can. Even if he feels a little silly, he's going to give it his best shot, and that's kind of fun to watch. One, two. <coughs> now that I've tried your record, how about trying mine? What do you mean, Jimmy? Let's sing a duet together. Oh, Jimmy, I'm no singer. How do you like that? He's got muscles there, muscles there, and up there, nothing but clap. <laughs> Come on, you can sing. There's nothing you can't do, you can't do. Nothing at all. 
And now, take my advice and you'll be made. You could be a great musician, a brilliant politician, a painter, though you'll never learn to paint. Just say you are what you aren't, and you will be, even though you ain't. Can I be a football hero? Good. An emperor like Nero, okay. a public benefactor and a saint. Sure. Just say you are what you aren't, and you will be, even though you ain't. All the critics will cheer when first you appear, and you hit high C. Hooray for me. Hooray, hooray for me, me, me. <laughs> the quiet man has become a blabbermouth. <laughs> You can be a big sensation, your voice will thrill the nation. Yes, you can make the people yell and faint. You're rich, you may tell me. You are what you are in, and you will be even do you win. The next stop is the Hollywood Bowl. That would be a leader society. You step in front of the footlights, and with an orchestra of 75 musicians behind you, you sing. <laughs> Very good job. A few more lessons and you'll be another Tennessee Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> but John, you've done it. You've reached the top. The London Palladium. The Queen is sitting in the royal box and you can hear a pin drop as you step forward and sing like you never sang before. <laughs> Stop the music! Stop the music! How do you like that? I build him up to a star and his voice changes. <laughs> Just say you are what you are in. And you will be. And I will be. Yeah, and you will be. Even though you ain't yet done. You will be. Even. You know, you've always been one of my favorite pianists. Oh, come now. Come now, Lee. <laughs> what are your favorite pianists? <laughs> you know I can't hold a candelabra to you. <laughs> from the boys. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> he don't talk me. He didn't do that at rehearsal. Guys, <laughs> we got him worried. Surrounded by Liberatis. I just threw that in. <laughs> when my true love comes along, he'll be a big, strong gaucho with a beautiful black wavy hair and flashing eyes and white smile, and he'll drive in a white suit of a horse. <laughs> Another channel. <laughs> hey, Schnabella, you have stuff? Somehow I can't get enough of your dancing, singing, romancing, you're a killer. Carmen Miranda was uh, almost a female equivalent to Durante in terms of energy and personality. It's almost like a spontaneous combustion to have the two of them together. Why, she knew me, used to pick us. Team up with me, and we'll be tremendous. I can see it now. You know who we want to hear? Wow! Introducing Miranda and Duranda. <laughs> if she wins, I want to return.
trained man. We'll smooth out a few rough edges and make our debout. Now watch me while I show you what it's all about. Now watch me and wiggle this way. Well, I can't fight to do what you say. Why, soon we'll be ready. They'll show confetti and maybe a fight I'll build. Where the new dancing team from Brazil. Hey, Schnurby. Is this how it's done? Gee, this will be lots of fun. Why, women will be screaming. Why, <laughs> <laughs> to dance with a man of my skill. <laughs> what the new dance and team from Brazil? Dip, up, slide, time. The other way. Down the other way. All right, now dip, up, slide, shake. Oh, shut up, you dread me nuts. Oh, ding, ding, and then you zoom, zoom. Well, I see, but it's no room for my zoom. Why, I'll teach you to flip. I have a callus in my hip. Don't worry, I won't send you no bills. Where well, do you stand? Where could that Jimmy be? <laughs> oh, Pop. I'm home. <laughs> Believe me, folks, I never looked like that. <laughs> Frank Sinatra clearly loved Jimmy Durante. You know, Frank, why don't you, you've got to settle down. My name is Jimmy in this scene. Jimmy, why don't you settle down? Never correct me in public. <laughs> and you can see Sinatra all through that skit and all through that song is just having a great time. He's having a great time. He's completely loose and relaxed and having a wonderful time working with Durante. Well, listen, uh, you're great in acting, Frank, but your singing is a little bit below par. You know, you don't give it that finesse. Let me give you a few points. Sing soft, sweet, gentle. Can I sing loud and yet sentimental? No. Sing soft. In the end, you rejoice. Da -da 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 -dee. What a shame to soften this voice. Will I win the ladies if I sing this way? I promise to make you the next Johnny Ray. Oh, yeah. Sing soft, soft, sweet, sweet, gentle, man, gentle. No use. He'll never improve. I try hard, Professor, to stay on my toes. What we seem of volume is soft, never grow. Ah, it ain't fair, Jimmy. You got a mute in your nose. Wait a minute. When I want to sing soft, I start the note for my diaphragm, bring it all the way up through the epiglottis, uh, bring it around through the roof of the mouth, and out through the nose. No wonder it's soft. After a long trip like that, it's too tired to make even a noise. <laughs> <laughs> but it's soft, it's sweet, and gentle. I don't get it, Professor. I really don't. Now, wait a minute. Let's take the song you sang in the early part of the show, The Birth of the Blues. Now, be careful. You're talking about the botchamy of its day. It's not the song that I'm complaining about. It's the way you sang it. You didn't give it that gentility and heart a song should have. You have a solution? Yeah, let me show you how you want to sing it. Now, wait a minute. You don't mean Durante style soft and sweet and gentle. Precisely. Well, let me hear it then. They took the breeze from the trees and the mellow deeps that they stole from the birds and bees. That was the birds of the blue. I got it. Then from a jail came the wail of a lonely trail. Didn't have the gold to pay her bail. That was the birth of the blue. Ray. And then the whippoorwill upon a hill serenaded the moon. And the humming bird started to hum, but the bum was out of tune. They took the breeze from the trees and the melodies that they stole from the 
from the fields. That was the birth of the blues. Jimmy, I'm a new man, a new Sinatra. Yes, sir. Why, you're debonair. Your magic will fill the air. Why, you'll be able to sing anywhere. With you, no one will compare. What about the girls? Why, the girls will embrace you and then hold you. Are you ready? Yes. Then sing soft and sweet like I told you. Now, first. Call your wife up and tell her she can quit working. What? Now, now, and then you fix your bow up. Now you start to burn up. Again you burn up. Again you burn up. Again you burn up. But this is me here, don't know for it. Say, again you burn up. Again you burn up. Again you burn up. Shut up. Let me hear the old bow. Stop the music, stop the music. You see what I mean, Frank? It's soft, sweet, gentle. It's charming and so debonair. It's in the approach to the song that you sing. How can I thank you? Well, just do one thing. What's that? Keep it a secret, don't tell it to be never, but sing soft and sweet and gentle. And remember that the whole thing is little. Sing soft, sing soft, sing sweet, sing sweet, sing gentle. Folks, this is my evening. And they told me I could do what I like. I'm going to play the piano. I'm going to sing and dance. I might even take a nap. <laughs> now listen. I want to play something all alone. I don't want nobody, nobody to play anything. <laughs> all alone. She doesn't like me. She doesn't like me. I wake a loo. Yes. Look, the musicians, they live the life of Riley. Look, they sit on cushions yet. <laughs> Give it me back, I got used to it. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> My piano the other day, but my mind was ill at ease. They were coming to take it away that afternoon. I was all by myself in a mellow mood, improvising symphony. My right hand was playing Mozart's minuet, and at the same time, the left hand was playing the half an hour from Carmen, and at the same time, my mark was with the sextet from Louis Jeans. And while all this was going on, what do you think my foot was doing? Well, keeping time, it was cracking walnuts. <laughs> See, I had to eat, too. Then in the midst of myself, a strange feeling came over me. My right hand stopped playing. My left hand stopped playing. My mouth stopped whistling. And my foot stopped cracking walnuts. Food became secondary. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I found this. I lost cough. That's it. I lost cough. I found the chord. Go out and find your own chord. <laughs> oh, can I hear the bass player play something all alone? Do 
we need him. <laughs> so let's celebrate. I'm feeling great. I'm the guy that found the Lord. Oh. That's it. It hasn't changed. I'll have my name in the Hall of Fame. Cause I just went and found that Paul. Now everybody knows Tchaikovsky, a genius, wasn't recognized for 300 years. Bach wasn't recognized for 400 years. Beethoven wasn't recognized for 500 years. I can't wait that long. I've only got two changes of clothes. <laughs> Can I hear the bass play something again? He's got to go. <laughs> so let's celebrate. I'm feeling great. I'm the guy that found the Lord. You know, it wasn't easy finding that Lord Paul. Working in my attic, I didn't sleep for days and days. I'd have been in terrible shape if I hadn't have slept nights. Ladies and gentlemen, how I struggled. I worked my brain to the bone. First I put an A flat with a B minor. Then I put a B minor with an F major. Then I put an F major with a B minor. Then I tried an A, the B, the B, the G, 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 but soon my efforts bore fruit and I found her. I lost cough. Music lovers, do you realize what you're hearing? I'll play it again. That's not the pawn. Neither was that. Neither was that. Neither was that. I lost the court of catastrophe. Lock like the doors. Nobody leaves the place until I find the for the car. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sit down on the keyboard of this piano until the chord is retired. That's it, the lost chord. I found it by sitting on the piano keyboard. I'll try it again. Very strange. I usually play by ear. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a break. I'm He had such a forceful personality that I think it reached right through that screen. It was as if you had a really ebullient uncle who came over at holiday parties and entertained in your living room. And everybody just loved this uncle, so everything he did was amusing. What do you say? Let's do the song, huh? You ready? Gentlemen, be prepared to be dazzled. But here they are, the Durani Girls. Folks, this is my interruge. It was kind of an innocent use of sex appeal on television. He was not behaving in any ungentlemanly manner toward those young women. He just had them surrounding him. She does my typing. She takes my dictation. She answers my phone. And this girl... Uh... I gotta find something for her to do. <laughs> and now that you're all here in the counter pub... Yes? Let me tell you the rules. So that you know the score. When it comes to romance or a difficult dance, you must have back the way you gotta give it a chance. Yes, you gotta keep up with Durani to be a Durani girl. Now the steps and the teeth are all within reach. Now watch it. Hey. Ain't 
Netta Pete. You gotta keep up with Durani. To be a Durani girl. Now it's lots of work. And if you don't shirk, I know I'll get along with you. And if you got no pet, I'll take a drastic step. You'll be banished to CBS and your career is true. Now, girls, I can tell you're going to be swell. Now, look. But with Durani, yeah, to be a Durani girl. They had to put a choreographer on the show. If someone landed from Mars and you were trying to explain Jimmy Durante, it would be hard enough. You can't explain Durante. Durante just is. Yes, you gotta keep up with Durante. To be a Durante girl. Yes, to be a Durante girl. You know, folks, I gotta tell you this. Ever since I've been back from New York, I haven't had a chance to say hello to my girlfriend. I see her in the audience. Ah, she's been awful lonesome without me. Jimmy loved to go into the audience and clown around. And one of his regular clowning partners was the woman who would become Mrs. Durante, Marjorie Little. She hasn't been as lonesome as I thought. There comes a time in every actor's life when the show don't have to go on. There is one show that we, a girlfriend and myself were in, and we tried to rip something off <laughs> the show. Hey, girls, have a cigar. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it, hold it, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ike, Ike and Natalie, how did you ever miss these two? He says, I'm sitting you next to Frank Sinatra. I said, oh, great. He told me I was a great swimmer. You all know Marty Little, who recently swam twice around the Staten Island Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't swim. After dating for 16 years, Jimmy and Margie finally married in 1960 and spent 20 happy years together. She may be weary. Women do get weary. Wearing the same shabby dress. And when she's weary, try a little tenderness. You know she's waiting. Just anticipating things she may never possess. And while she's without them, try a little tenderness. It's not just sentimental. She has her grief. And the word that's soft and gentle Makes it easier to bear You won't regret it Women don't forget it Love is their hope for happiness it's all so easy. Try your little tent. No. No. Jimmy Durante was a rarity in show business. The same man off screen as he was on. A funny, kind, gentle, and respectful man who loved his work, his co workers, and his family. He was like Santa Claus. He was like jolly and he had a big gruff voice and he was always really happy. Just lively and animated and lots of fun. He just worshipped little Cece. He wanted to give her the whole world. The only time they would ever fight is when I wanted something and he would say, I'll let the kid have what she wants. 
spoiled her rotten. <laughs> The only time when my mom would say, no, you have to discipline her. She can't stay up till 11 o'clock at night on a school night. And he just always wanted to be, me to be around him. He was a good father. Yeah, he was a great dad. Now when I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep. And I fall asleep counting my Lesson. And when my bankroll is getting small, I think of when I had none at all, and I fall asleep counting my blessings. I think about a nursery. And picture curly heads And one by one I count them As they slumber in their beds So if you're worried And you can't sleep Just count your blessings Instead of sheep And you fall asleep Count He had no artifice about him in his performing persona. So there was great sincerity in his reading of those lyrics, and I think that's what touched people, and still touches people today, even if they don't really know who it is who's singing. Good night, good night, good night. It's time to say good night. What more to say but good night? We've had a few laughs, and it's time for two to lose. Hurry, go up, we the same, and it could think could do. Good night. Good night. In 1951, Jimmy Durante received a Peabody Award for Television Excellence. He was nominated for an Emmy Award for three straight years, finally winning the Emmy in 1953 as Best Television Comedian. But it wasn't just his comedy that endeared Durante to television audiences. It was also the way he ended each broadcast with seven haunting words. Good night, Mrs. Calabash. Where ever you are. She wasn't a person. Everybody thinks Mrs. Calabash was a real person, like a mistress or another Why, You know, who was Mrs. Calabash? But she was for all the lonely ladies in the world. That's what Mrs. Calabash stood for. I don't think it matters who Mrs. Calabash is or was or maybe wasn't. I think it's the, it's that little touch of poignancy at the end of a performance that gets to you. Whether he's saying goodbye to a lost love or to someone who's passed on and is up in heaven. You don't know, but it doesn't seem to matter. And I think he understood that, too. Good night, folks. And good night, Mrs. Calabash. Well, Emmy. And they talked me into doing a live show. <laughs> Durante, they want everybody to know that the eye tells why Motor, it's Motorola TV. We both need a script. <laughs> we'll have a... Uh... 
the case. A tailor case? I wonder if that's anything like pizza. 